There is a hidden history that's been deliberately obfuscated from the peoples of the world, and that's why I am on the trail of the Nephilim. The Genesis 6 narrative states that the Nephilim are on the earth in those days and also afterwards. If that's true, can we find evidence that corroborates this? I'm L.A. Marzulli. Join me as we go on the trail of the Nephilim. I am your somewhat intrepid host, Ellie Marzulli. We're on a trail of a Nephilim here. I'm going to show you a clip from Out of Place Artifacts. And it's we go all the way down to Peru, Oye Tintambo, with a, arche, a Peruvian archaeologist, uh, Andreas Agassi. I think you'll find it, uh, like, like I hope you'll find all the shows interesting. Hit the subscribe button and we'll get into it. But first, a word from our trusted sponsor. Excess belly fat has been deemed the most dangerous fat of them all as it's linked to so many health issues. The reason being, excess belly fat grows deep in the abdominal cavity and puts pressure on some of the body's most vital organs. That's one of the reasons why myself, along with so many people, are beginning to turn to this amazing new substance, which is thoughtfully formulated with science-backed ingredients that promote reduced fat storage. Help to speed up the breakdown of fat, support weight management, reduce cravings, and boost metabolism. Folks, the best part I love is that you can get 51% off for the rest of the month or until they sell out, whichever comes first. Get yours now by going to trimwithla.com. Once again, that's trimwithla.com. Trimwithla.com. I'm going to give this 30 days. I'll report back to you, and we'll see what it does. So here's the bottom line. Why do the powers that be, mainstream archaeology, why do they take the obvious and try to tell us that, well, what you're looking at, what you're seeing, well, you're really not seeing that, when we know that something is going on here. So I'm going to roll the clip because we're being manipulated. I mean, there's no doubt about it. And when you go down to these sites, and if you have a Peruvian guide, you will get the party line. And you'll hear things like, well, we really don't know what these people call themselves. They were ma the Inca, but they were the Inca. We think they were the Inca or the predecessors to the Inca. They were master stonemasons. Well, if they were master stonemasons, why, why hasn't this continued? Why, why does it just stop? And then when the Inca move into the area, they repurposed <clears throat> these sites. They repurposed the sites. We see this over and over and over again throughout every single site I've ever been at. And we hear things like, well, these people that built Oyetantambo or Saksewamon, they left and they abandoned the site because of climate change. Really, why is it that it's always climate change, no matter where you go, whether it's the stones in Karnak, France, or the megaliths in Spain, or Gozo, or Malta, or here in the United States, or going down to South America, it's always the same party line. They abandoned the site due to climate change, especially in Teotihuacan, Mexico, and Chaco Canyon. So I'm going to roll the tape, check this out, and at the back of it, back end of it, I'll weigh in on it. Here's the, uh, this is from Out of Place Artifacts. So if you don't have a copy of it, lamarzuli.net, check it out. Andreas, here at Oyatin Tombo. The stonework is incredible. And the side stone. Seven on the most hardened scale. Some of these, some of the boulders, the, the megaliths up there, are as much as 50, 60 tons, perhaps even more. Your right. thoughts? Right. Well, my thoughts, again, this is absolutely not from our age. Right? This is coming from a really ancient age of people uh, that could make details, you know, and, and cut the stone like it's a butter. Like it's butter, like exactly. It's butter. It's so right. soft, so well done that today's just impossible. You know, so also 
taking from the quarry the other side of the mountain, right. the other side of the river, right. to come over here, right there, you know, the biggest stop. How, how was that heist. done? No one knows. No one knows. It's, uh, it was, some people tried to do it, you know, tried some uh, explorers, archaeologists, archaeologists, explorers. yeah, okay. like John Pierre Protzen. He right. makes a calculation, I, okay. I suggest that book, it's really good. But uh, anyway, he just can't tell how this was done. Think about something, we know that um, fallen angel technology, I keep using that phrase, but, but when, you, when we go into the supernatural realm, specifically of the fallen angelic coast of heaven, what we see are entities which are able to manipulate space-time, matter, and energy in ways that defy our modern physics. And I would suggest to you that that's exactly what we're looking at. Whoever these entities are, they are able to manipulate space, time, matter, and energy all at the same time. And the technology that created these walls no longer exists on this planet. It was taken when they left. So what we're looking at, and I say this in the film, that whoever is doing this manipulates space, time, matter, and energy in ways that we don't know. Now you say, well, you know, these the stones that you were showing with Andreas are, are somewhat small. I get that. But there's precision there. Whoever is doing this does so because they can. They're not sweating it. When you go to a place like Oyotintambo and you go up to what they call the Temple of the Sun. Now, we don't know what that was actually called or what its purpose was. They just make all this up. They just make it up. But something cataclysmic destroyed that site. And it's all in the book on the Trail of the Nephilim. You'll find that's inter that interesting also. It's also in our Watchers series, The Secret Cosmic War, where we go to Oyotintambo for the first time. And Richard Shaw, my business partner, and I were just blown away by what we were seeing at Oyotintambo. It's in the Sacred Valley. Um, the site, I believe, is pre-flood. Something destroyed it. But here's, here's the bottom line. If, and I, and I say this in the Out of Place Artifact film, if, if you can't create stone masonry walls in modernity with diamond saws and cranes and everything else, then how was it that the ancients were able to do this? Folks, here's the deal. Whoever did it, it's hidden technology. It's hidden from us. Whoever did this, I remember Brian Forrester saying this the first time we were at Saksewamam, which is, I think, 2013. So it was 10 years ago. And, and Brian was a great guide, by the way. But Brian stated on the record that whoever did this took the tools with them. The archaeological community have, has never found, to the best of our knowledge, any type of tools other than the Inca copper chisel. And as we demonstrate in the film, you can't cut andesite stone with a copper chisel. So if you can't do it, how is it done? Why is it that these tools that were there to create these incredible, precise walls that we see in Oyotintamo and, and Machu Picchu and Sacsayhuaman, all down in Peru, and there's other places like in Bolivia, the same type of thing. Some, some kind of technology is there that's completely lost to us. Now, there's two paradigms. Paradigm one, these are extraterrestrials who visited us, and they were the ones who constructed all these incredible, incredibly uh, enigmatic sites. That's paradigm one. Paradigm two, which is my paradigm, and I believe is the truth, is you're not extraterrestrials. They are interdimensional entities that manipulate space, time, matter, and energies in ways that defy our physics. But they're able to do that because they're out from outside where we are. They are from the third heaven. So they can, they can come here and do all the things that we see them do. But it's enigmatic. And then we've got this one little scripture that we read about in the Genesis account, where it says they built, this is after the flood, so whatever happened pre-flood, the, the, um, mankind no longer has access to it. So we read this one little scripture, which in my opinion is so pregnant with meaning, and the Holy Spirit includes it in, in the account. And it says, this is when they're going to build the Tower of Babel. They built with, with um, brick instead of stone. They built with brick, and for mortar they used slime. 
So they, they've got bricks, they're making bricks, and they're mortaring it together. But that little phrase, instead of stone, that's pre-flood. So it doesn't, and it's really important to get this, something happens before the flood, then the flood, and after the flood, they can no longer, or they no longer are building with stone the way they built before the flood. Interesting. Which is why uh, people like Tim Alberino and myself and others, Mondo Gonzalez, believe that these sites that we see in Peru are, in fact, pre-flood. There you have it, folks. You can check that out. That is number eight in our uh, Amitrail of a Nephilim series. Look, the streaming site's really cool. Because right now you can go to streaming.lamarzuli.net, streaming.lamarzuli.net. There are 27 films to choose from. Lots and lots of material. But if you want the On a Trail of a Nephilim, that's number eight in the series, Out of Place Artifacts. Check that out. Or if you want the hard copy, order it from our main site, lamarzuli.net, lamarzuli.net. I will be in Texas at the end of January. Looking forward to that. Haven't been there in over a decade. So it'll be very interesting to go back and see some old friends and uh, hopefully meet some new ones. Um, we're also, it's, it's tentative, but we're going to be in Claremont, Southern California. I, I believe the, the weekend of the 15th or 16th of January, something like that. Um, just a Friday, Saturday, because we can drive there. And then Sunday we'll return home here. So there's no LAX. There's no airport parking. It, it's sort of in and out, but we will be in Claremont. And we'll, once we get a definitive um, agreement on that, we'll be posting that up as well on the website. Thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate your patronage. you coming here every day. Um, the thousands of you that do so. Uh, in some ways, it's, it's kind of like an online church. I'm here five days a week, sometimes six days. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for subscribing. Remember, folks, there is a hidden history that has been deliberately obfuscated from the peoples of the world. And that's why your intrepid host is on the trail of the Nephilim.